Some people genuinely believe that because Portable got the remaster, that this basically confirms that a full Persona 3 remake is in the works. Which to me, comes off as cope. Damn, get a load of this guy. So, it finally happened. After months of rumors and supposed leaks, we've got official confirmation that a From the Ground Up remake of Persona 3 has been in the works, and will be released sometime in early 2024. And you know what? It looks pretty cool. As much as I want to do my edgy critic thing where I sit in my armchair and talk about this game with one eyebrow raised the whole time, I can't. This trailer put a fat smile on my face from start to finish. While I'm not usually the kind of person who likes to speculate, I feel as though I'm sort of obligated to for this one. Persona 3, while not my favorite Atlas game, is a title that I have a lot of appreciation for, especially in recent times. However, I was never under the impression that the game needed a remake. Despite some of its gameplay oddities and weird storytelling choices, it's still a game that I recommend everyone play in some form. For me personally, I'm more impartial to Persona 3 Fess on the PlayStation 2. While not the most accessible version of the game, I I feel as though it's less conventional ideas give the game a unique identity that you can't find anywhere else. The tactics menu is a prime example of this. Fess is the only game in the series that mandates the use of AI-controlled party members, and while that might not be everyone's cup of tea, you can't deny that it's a core part of Persona 3's identity, and that's not even mentioning stuff like the way social links are handled, and even the presentation. Persona 3 Portable, while an admirable attempt to adapt the game into a handheld form factor, ultimately made some changes that I wasn't a big fan of. The removal of multiple weapon types for the main character, the reworked fusion spells, and the bonus story content didn't quite rub me the wrong way. Though in that same breath, there were some additions that I welcome, like the Fem C and her exclusive social links. A lot of people like this version of the game more, and that's totally fine, I'll just stick with my preferred version. I was never one of those people that were campaigning for some super ultimate Persona 3 definitive edition. To me, there really isn't much of a point. If I want to play the game with 3D models in the tactics menu, then I'll play it on PS2. If I want the Fem C and skill cards, then I'll play Portable. You know you can like both versions of this game, right? You're not forced into playing one over the the other, so why not just play both? That's the real Persona 3 Definitive Edition, and it's the way I've been playing the game for years. Which is why the prospect of this game getting a remake always made me a bit worried. The last thing I want is for Persona 3 to become this weird hodgepodge of ideas taken from different sections of the franchise, while still trying to retain Persona 3's core identity. I don't want this game to turn into this unrecognizable grey mush of pointless additions and changes that take away from the experience. Not saying that they aren't capable of doing it in a way that stays faithful to the original game, but going off of past experiences with this franchise, I have the right to be at least a little skeptical. I mean, you never know if you're getting yourself a Persona 4 Golden on Steam or a Strange Journey Redux if you catch my drift. Which is why I think it means something when I say that Persona 3 Reload looks pretty promising from the little that we've seen. So let's talk about it. You know who I feel really bad for? The people looking forward to Persona 5 Tactica. Don't get me wrong, it looks like a fun time. It's basically a Persona Fire Emblem game, so almost a decade after that teaser, we finally got the real crossover. But like, nobody is talking about this game, and I honestly don't blame them. I mean, when you offer a Persona fan the video game equivalent of chess in a real Persona game, then it's pretty obvious which one they're gonna pick. Damn, I should play Devil Survivor at some point. So after watching this trailer about 30 times, I've compiled a list of talking points. I went through this shit frame by frame so I didn't miss anything. So we're going to be talking about the stuff that I like, the stuff I didn't like, what I expect to see, and some other speculations. Since this trailer is only like a minute long, I don't really have much to work with. Going off of first impressions, Persona 3 Reload looks to be exactly what I was expecting it to be from a visual standpoint. The characters are realistically proportioned, the talking head sprites have little lip flap animations, and the environments seem to be faithfully recreated, but now feature full camera movement. We only saw a handful of locations in this trailer, so it's too early to tell whether or not they'll be expanding Tatsumi Port Island beyond what we saw in the original game, but the main locations seem to be nailed already. Gekukan High and Polonia Mall both look great, and interestingly enough, aren't reused from Persona 3 dancing. The same goes for the character models now that I think about it. The shot of Igis at the start of the trailer is the most blatant example of this. A lot of people, including myself, assumed that if they were going to remake this game, they'd try their best to reuse as many assets as they could. But no, this all looks to be entirely original stuff, 
which is a good sign. To me, that's confirmation that they're taking their time with this. I'm also relieved to see that Peace Studios are the ones in charge of this project. No better team to remake the game than the ones who made the original. Though, it's unknown how many people from the original staff are involved with this remake. Something that I really like is the water motif they seem to be going with. The trailer opens up on a shot of the ocean. The filler subtext is submerged in water. The UI elements on the top right corner are accompanied by an oceanic wave. And the pause screen has Makoto crashing into the water. It's definitely a deliberate choice, but I'm not entirely sure what it's supposed to represent on a symbolic level. There's probably some connection between water and the core themes of Persona 3, but I'm not smart enough to be the one to make that comparison. I will admit, however, there's stuff in this trailer that doesn't exactly sit right with me, though I'm sure most of it is because the game is still in development. Some aspects of the visual design don't quite sit right with me. There are some shots in this trailer that look really good, and then there are others that look kinda shit. The scene with Yukari and Makoto in the dorm is a prime example of this. The lighting is very flat, which makes the scene look incredibly dull. This particular shot makes the game look kind of ugly, and I hope that this is something that's touched up before the final release. Also, I'm not the first one to say this, but the battle UI doesn't look very good. I don't just mean from an aesthetic standpoint. To be honest, I actually like the crescent moon and the blue shadows highlighting the characters. What I don't like is how the action selection is just a blue circle with text that's difficult to read at a glance. It's clear that they're trying to go for a minimalistic look, but this is one of those rare cases when having more detail would probably benefit the user experience. I just can't get over how jarring the text looks in comparison to everything else. In that same breath, I may as well also bring up the shop UI at the police station. Not because it looks bad, but because it just doesn't fit with the rest of the game. The reason why Persona 3 is associated with the color blue is because that's the primary color used as the basis for all of its visual design. But this area sticks out like a sore thumb. We go from having blue menus, blue text boxes, blue shadows, to suddenly red and black. Don't get me wrong, it looks nice, but the lack of uniformity does bother me. The thing about judging games based on reveal trailers is that you need to keep in mind that not everything you see is going to be final. I mean this for both the good and the bad. Sure, the UI can look a little weird now, but who's to say that it won't be changed by the time the actual game is out? I'm sure that these UI elements are a work in progress, and will receive some tweaks and improvements as development goes on, but only time will tell on that one. There isn't a whole lot we can glean from Persona 3 Reload from this trailer alone. It's only a minute of footage, and honestly, doesn't show a whole lot. I feel as though it only exists to build excitement. Get the word out that yes, a Persona 3 remake is coming. But that's not to say that there isn't anything to discuss. While nothing is set in stone, I can at least make some educated guesses on what's going to be included and what's not based on skimming through this footage a couple of times. Again, a lot of this is speculation. We won't know for sure until we get confirmation. One of the first things that stood out to me in this trailer was the inclusion of Kenji. This kid is one of the first social links you get in the original Persona 3. However, what's important to note is that Kenji's social link is replaced by a social link with Junpei when playing the FemC route in Persona 3 Portable. Now this can mean a lot of things, and Atlas showing this right off the bat was most likely intentional. To me, this sets the expectation that every old social link has the possibility of returning. The thought of seeing Nozomi in HD terrifies me, but it also raises the question as to whether or not the male party members will be getting social links of their own, or if they're going to stick with the old ones for the sake of being loyal. Some new content is clearly shown in this trailer, mainly the scene where Yukari and the protagonist are cooking at the dorm, though I'm not sure if this is a new social link event, or maybe it's a filler cutscene for making SP restoration items items like you could in Persona 5. There's a chance that they could keep only the old social links, replace some with the new ones, or just add more on top of the ones we got in the original game. I'm also curious as to what they're gonna do from a gameplay side of things. From the little that we got in the trailer, the most I can say that Tartarus exists and you can now control your party members. I kind of want the Persona 5-isms to be kept to a minimum if I'm being honest. Baton passing is a great idea and is something that is most likely going to be implemented in this game, but aside from that, I'd rather see new and original gameplay ideas. Something that makes this game less Persona 3 but it plays like Persona 5, and more so something that elevates Persona 3 as its own thing. Could be a good opportunity to experiment if you ask me. Also, they're 100% going to bring back Shuffle Time, since Demon Negotiation wouldn't work with Persona 3's shadows. I'm also kind of worried that they're gonna fuck with Tartarus too much. The last thing I want is for Tartarus to become Persona 5's palaces. I'm imagining a world where every block of Tartarus is a fully constructed dungeon 
dungeon, with safe room-like checkpoints every once in a while. While some people would like that, I would honestly be kind of disappointed if that's what it ends up being. I want this game to feel distinctly Persona 3, and not like a Persona 3 mod for P5, and the best way to do that is to keep Tartarus feeling like it did before. Maybe spice it up a bit, but don't change the foundation. Also, I know it says floor 123 at the bottom of the screen, but that could just be fancy set dressing, and only exists to show the scale of this place more than anything. Though, since we are talking about this remake, we have to address the elephant in the room. There's the question as to whether or not the FEMC is going to be featured in this remake at all. While it's too early to tell, I'm personally leaning more on the side of her not making the cut. She's not featured at all in the trailer or in the official artwork, and you'd figure that Atlas would show her off as a main selling point if she was included. Plus, Portable was also recently ported to Steam, so maybe Atlas will use it as an excuse to cut her. While it would be cool if she was included, that might be beyond the scope of this project. Something that people tend to forget is that the female protagonist in Persona 3 is more than just a skin swap of the male protagonist. She has a lot of exclusive content and events. It's a lot more work than people think it is, and it seems as though they've already got their hands full already. Not saying that she can't be in the game or that I don't want her to be included, but I'm not holding my breath on it. The same applies to the answer as well. I've got a feeling that this remake is going to be focused entirely on the core Persona 3 experience, but again, it's too early to tell on that one. But hey, since this is Atlas, they'll probably just sell these two pieces of heavily requested content as DLC or some crap. It's kind of inevitable that this game will have day one DLC because every Atlas game seems to have it at this point. I'm expecting some of the standard shit like the money and experience grinding pack and some bonus costumes or whatever. I really hope they don't lock any meaningful content behind a paywall. Or if they are gonna do that, at least wait until after launch. I'm calling it now. Monad is going to be DLC. See. And if I'm right, I'm going to fucking lose it. All in all, Persona 3 Reload looks promising. Sure, we've only seen about a minute of footage, but hey, at least it was a good minute. It did its job well at getting the word out. They have my attention, and only time will tell whether or not it lives up to expectations. While I do want this game to stay somewhat loyal to the original, I am open for Atlas to trying new things, as long as it doesn't mess with the game's legacy. This will be a lot of people's first time experiencing Persona 3, and the last thing I want is for this remake to give them the wrong impression. I want this to be something like the Resident Evil 2 remake, not a replacement for the classic game, but a nice companion piece to play alongside it. You've got my attention guys. Now uh, don't fuck this up.